Welcome to Project eDrive's launch of occupational standards for electric hybrid vehicle training and training of first responders. I think I have the best position in this room because if you could only see yourselves, oh my gosh. Can you just do me a favor, please? Just turn to the person beside you and say you look like a burst of energy. Burst. <laughs> a burst of good energy, right? A burst of energy. And don't worry, we're on safe territory. I know when we say burst of energy, people think, oh my God, is it safe? No, it's a good kind of energy. It's a good kind of energy. We're so happy to have you all with us. Now, electric vehicles is all the buzz, right? It's all the buzz. We've been sold on electric vehicles, I think. I've been telling everybody that my next vehicle will be either fully electric or hybrid, for sure, right? Especially when I go to the gas station and I'm filling up my tank and it's like $15,000 and I'm like, what? What does that even mean? Right? So I think we are here. The future is here for sure. And we are here to make sure that we have the right infrastructure, the right trainers to make sure that we are secure in going forward. The JPS Foundation and the IDB Lab have created a powerful collaboration to deliver this exciting three-year project called Building a Sustainable Electric Mobility Ecosystem for Inclusion and Access. Short version, Project eDrive. The project symbolizes the partnership and cooperation between both organizations to influence the transition and the transformation of sectors critical to national development in a sustainable manner. In this case, the objective is to improve the areas, improve the nexus between the power and transport sectors to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Jamaica is now taking decisive action to create a similar success in the transport sector by replacing internal combustion engine vehicles with electric vehicles, a strategy globally considered as one of the best consumer and behavioral change approaches to reduce CO2 emissions and fight climate change. The primary aim of the eDrive project is to create an enabling environment for a sustainable electric mobility ecosystem. The project's emphasis is on capacity building and training and creating opportunities for small and medium enterprises and their employees in this new EV value chain. The outcomes of this project will be transformational for the average Jamaican. It will ensure a heightened awareness of electric vehicles by the public and an understanding of the support systems available and the associated entrepreneurial opportunities. They have gotten me to drive an electric vehicle and so I can tell you it has been transformational. The eDrive project team believes in harnessing the strength of experts to achieve sustainable results. It was against this background that we sought to partner with experts and stakeholders to achieve the deliverables of component three. These were training of trainers, development of curricula for first responders and auto mechanics, vehicle technicians, training of 200 first responders and 200 vehicle technicians, development of safety standards to support the development of the e-mobility sector. We have ambitious targets in this sector of the program. And in this, we have collaborated with Green Solutions International, SKN Incorporated, MCT VET, and industry stakeholders to develop the occupational standards for three EV training programs. I pause to acknowledge the support of Dr. Wayne Archibald and the GSI SKN team, Mrs. Janelle Simpson Rodney of NCT VET, and the following members of the automobile and energy sectors who supported the development of the standards. 
Mr. Wade Williams, energy consultant. Mr. Mahal Brown, flash motor stewards. Mr. Marvin Brown, Caribbean Military Institute. Mr. Damian Henry, Fidelity Motors. Mr. Leslie Bell, Toyota, Jamaica. It's about collaboration. That is why we have gotten here. I think it's really worth a round of applause. So we acknowledge the Learning Resource Development Unit of the Heart NSTA team. Come on, you have to give it up for Heart. <laughs> for their support in developing the EV training program curricula. Special mention to Dr. Henry Gray, to Dr. Monica Porter-Lewis, and to Mrs. Michelle Parkinson for their commitment. Can I say that again? For their commitment to finalizing the curriculum. To our strategic partnership team members who have journeyed with us, Mrs. K. Marie Forbes from Buckham, boy, poor K. Marie. <laughs> Ms. Jody Ann Clark and Ms. Katrina Bennett, thank you for staying the course. <laughs> you have been to the hills and the valleys with us, and we thank you. Today, we celebrate what true partnership births. Quote today symbolizes the beginning of the next phase of the journey to meeting our final objective of upskilling 400 Jamaicans, and this is no beginning. It has been an exciting opportunity thus far to support our national goals to reduce the impacts of climate change. We look forward to sharing our progress over the coming weeks and months. Today represents a historic milestone for Project E-Drive, for the JPS Foundation, and for Jamaica. As you have heard through Project E-Drive's leadership, Jamaica became the first country in the Caribbean to establish the EV training program, certified by the UK-based Institute of the motor industry. We've heard much talk about the three components of the project, but I want to just say how pleased Hart is to be a part of that third component, the technical capacity building training. The Trust is very encouraged at the opportunities that are presented in this meeting of the minds on the way forward with this understanding that the future is now. This partnership could not have come at a better time for us as it is so in sync with several aspects of our operations at the Heart NSTA Trust. Now, how will this initiative impact Heart's economic drive mandate? by the creation of a new cohort of skilled workers in Jamaica, by spearheading the environmental impact through clear or no emissions, thus helping to make Jamaica truly a place to live, to work, to do business and to raise families. What we end up with at the end of all of this is a fortified and executable plan as directed by the strong and purposeful leadership embodied in our chairman and the members of our board. It is expected that this partnership will see 400 and I'm sure the numbers will increase. Persons, 200 mechanics, 200 first responders, engaging in training between December 2022 and March 2023. This, we believe, is only the beginning. I extend a hearty thank you to our partners, our sponsors, our patrons, and Team Heart for this great opportunity to be a part of this inevitable revolution in renewable energy, a revolution in how we look at transport in Jamaica. I thank you. The National Council on Technical Vocational Education and Training, NCTVET, is a committee that was established by the Heart Trust to promote quality outcomes in training, assessment, and certification processes. And we have the mandate to develop national vocational qualifications of Jamaica, and this is guided by the National Qualification Framework that consists of eight levels, levels one through to eight. 
and this is these are regionally and internationally recognized this award is a proof that you have the skills knowledge and understanding to perform in accordance to workplace requirements at a particular level and this was the reason why this partnership was very critical what we do we do it for the world of work and as a result this partnership was very very important for us we develop occupational standards and this partnership brings a lot of inf information and resources to the table the nvqj the national vocational qualification of jamaica provides the opportunity for more working Jamaicans to get formal recognition of their competence. At JPS, we have a vision, very ambitious vision of leading the energy revolution. And we knew that that vision requires a leap of faith and a willingness to boldly go where no one has gone before one of the most important requirements of change and innovation is the mindset. Today's launch represents the start of training for persons to work in this area. This is not just about skills training, it's about training persons to see the world differently. We are literally We are literally building the future by providing training opportunities for persons who expect to be world changers. Not just in the area of electric uh, mobility, but also in other areas of the economy. Our commitment at GPS is to continue to push the boundaries and to stay true to our vision of leading the energy revolution. As we approach, and I think many of you may not know this, next year is going to be our 100th anniversary. And um, yeah. we're going to continue to build on that legacy, uh, a very, very rich legacy of power and innovation. We are undergoing significant transformation at GPS. And it is really about a sustainable future, building a sustainable future. We are putting in the necessary technologies to integrate renewable, a lot more renewable energy into the grid. And we are very, very serious about green and sustainable development. Very, very serious. It is a fantastic time, a fantastic event, uh, really. Uh, so thanks very much for inviting us today. Um, I'd like to start by, by congratulating on behalf of the IDB group, the eDrive team as a whole. Um, they have done a fantastic job, really. I'd like to get our hands together on that behalf. Great, 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 great job. Great job. And, and in fact, I'd also on behalf of the IDB, I'd like to, to congratulate the 15 instructors that have been already trained. Congratulations. Well done. You know, for the IDB group, we are supporting more than 15, 15 countries across the region, Latin America and the Caribbean, in developing strategic frameworks, plans, uh, you know, regulatory adjustments, studies it, along these lines, you know. And in fact, um, working with uh, supporting the government of Jamaica, develop the strategic framework for e-mobility. Earlier this year, the cabinet adopted, as you know, and in fact, the, the cabinet has already, and the government has already uh, introduced some fiscal incentives by reducing from 30% to 10% the import duties and by waiving um, the registration of the EV for five years. So these are concrete actions that the government uh, is taking to contribute to this ecosystem. It's obvious from our discussion that this is a far-reaching program for industry development with the scope of replication, scope for replication in many other areas. So it's the design that I find fascinating, you know, all the components coming together to, to do this thing. 
For more part, the JCC has a 240 year history. And no, this does not mean you're gonna get 240 year ways to show love, no, no. <laughs> but but um, we are one of the oldest in the hemisphere. We have supported generations of Jamaican business by acting as the voice of business in advocacy and cooperative leadership for the business community and from the business community. Um, our job is to represent those who see the vital importance of commerce in Jamaica's positive, in Jamaica's in Jamaica as a positive evolutionary tool that when championed fervently and facilitated evenly and effectively, we can create the needed lift for so many of our people and indeed Jamaica as a whole. It is the promotion of a national and regional social, economic, political environment, otherwise known as an ecosystem, that has to be the word of the day, right? <laughs> right? right? The promotion of an ecosystem where commerce thrives and is a force for good. That is at the forefront of the role of the Jamaica Chamber Commerce and one that we pursue vigorously. The targeting of our key, key first responder personnel creates a safe environment for the industry to flourish. So this acts as a great first step. Brilliant. Simple, brilliant. I also want to commend the product designers for the effort to create a framework of self-sufficiency and sustainability by including and certifying a train to train component, which we heard about, and the funding mechanism, which you haven't heard too much about. But that's very important because often we pay no attention to institutionalizing a process for, for future knowledge sharing, for continuity, with the result that sooner or later we end up having to start again and again and again. We've seen this in our economy by putting in the elements that protect the ecosystem, get people to feel comfortable, this is an essential way forward. And as I said, a template for the things that we develop going forward. We, we can't yet see where this is going, but as, as we said, you have to believe and you have to use history to, to understand that. So I look forward to seeing the partners, Heart Trust, NCT Bed, IDB, to ensure that this happens, to ensure that we, we, we stay ahead of the curve or we stay on the curve, right? Looking for those um, changes in innovation. Someone once says, if opportunity doesn't come knocking, build a door. I want to thank JPS Foundation and the partners for building a door for themselves and for others today. Thank you.